I mean, this is a sort of a, a film that's about the value of friendship, of being surrounded by the, the people that you love. And I was wondering, off the back of um, Can You Ever Forgive Me, which is a film that is intrinsically about kind of loneliness, mm. uh, was that in partly what attracted you to taking on this project? Because it felt so different in many regards. Probably subconsciously. Probably subconsciously after living with a movie for two or three years that was all about loneliness, the thought of sort of this light in the darkness of somebody with an immense amount of kindness, it probably felt good. I think it's also a reflection of what's happening politically and in my own life that makes me feel like there are certain projects that are drawing me for whatever reason. Yeah, I was thinking when I was watching this actually what uh, Fred would make of the current political climate. Mm. Did you, do, what do you think? Because I mean, he's obviously someone that manages to find positivity and kindness in everyone. But do you think he'd, even he'd struggle at the moment with some of the people? In the world? I think he probably would struggle. And I think that's part of what's amazing about Fred was that he did struggle, but he still chose to take steps toward kindness. You know, the biggest thing is I think he would be encouraging us to listen. I feel like part of what's the hardest part of today is that we're sort of in echo chambers of our own perspectives and we're not listening to each other and there isn't room for nuance and there isn't room for real dialogue. You know, people aren't even listening to news sources that are gonna give them a complete picture of the real world. They're just listening to what they wanna hear. I think he would be really encouraging a more holistic view of what our world is and asking people to kind of slow down and examine why they're viewing things the way they're viewing things. Um, he also is very encouraging to people to show emotion. That's one of the things yeah. in this movie as well. Um, and I was just thinking about, about displaying kind of male emotion on screen in this movie, which we see a lot of. And I saw this at the London Film Festival, and obviously that's when you see sort of four films a day for three weeks. And I realised how few films displayed vulnerability in, in men and saw yes. men crying on screen. I was wondering about about how important you think it is to, to, to show that side on It London shouldn't be something that feels radical to see on screen, but I found myself, as we went along, fighting to keep these certain things that I felt were so important. And I, it was only as we kind of worked on them I realised, like, no, this was part of why I wanted to tell this story, to show, to show male emotion, to show a different side of masculinity, to show sensitive men who are shifting and changing and trying to be better, but also to see a man caring for his child, preparing a bottle for his baby in the middle of the night, hugging his father and saying, I'm sorry, or I love you, you know, crying. These are things that the men in my life show and are willing to experience, and it's the world that I want my son to see, that that is okay, you know, it's, it was a gift that Mr. Rogers gave to all children that your emotions are valid, you can share them, I'm here with you for them. So it became sort of a bit of a mission statement about the movie is, let's let us see a different side of masculinity. And I was wondering, I'm, I'm, I'm sure so many people are discussing Tom Hanks with you as mm. naturally, but I mean Matthew Reese is so good in this, and Chris Cooper as well. I know. I mean, you must. It, this is more than this is more than just Hanks, isn't it? This is a real ensemble piece. It's a total ensemble piece, and Susan Kalechi Watson and Marianne Plunkett, who plays Joanne Rogers. I mean, it really is a family story, and um, and I think Matthew does so much of the emotional heavy lifting of the movie. You know, his character really has to go through an enormous transformation, really, from A to Z. Um, he, and he has to play every note along the way. His character really undergoes a huge emotional change over the course of the movie, and we have to believe that he, that it's all earned, you know. Um, it's a very delicate tightrope that he walks emotionally throughout the movie. And Chris Cooper is like watching a master class. He is just one of the most incredible actors working every day on set. I mean, he moved me to tears. He was just, his performance is spectacular. And how important is, do you think, the character of Lloyd B? Because he's cynical about um, yeah. Fred. Um, he really represents the viewer here. I mean, yeah, I, he it's does. great, isn't it, having a kind of entry point where they need to be convinced. Because in some ways that means that if they're able to be convinced over the course of the film, then... We, we are. Too. I also think he uh, he's a good introduction. If you didn't grow up with Mr. Rogers, Lloyd also helps to kind of show us as an audience, especially in another country, if you didn't grow up knowing exactly who Mr. Rogers was. It's a great way in, and he is sort of a stand-in for our own cynicism and our own neurotic tendencies so um that was just such a smart part of the script it was something that i felt like it it made so much sense and it made the movie work in a non-biopic way 
Because yeah, you were mentioning that it's, um, you know, obviously he's he's like a sort of an American hero in many regards, but I'd never really heard of him. No, I know. He never really sort of um, translated, well, not translated, but he never really came over here. Right. Um, so what do you think it is about this story then that will appeal? Because, I mean, I loved it, and everyone I know who's seen it at the London Film Festival loved it, and yet we don't know anything about... I don't think you have to. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I think his message and his philosophy about how we treat people and what we do with our own anger is so universal. It doesn't matter if you've never heard of the guy at all. In some ways, it's sort of a great way to see the movie because um, you don't have to have any previous knowledge about him. You can be, you can experience it kind of purely and discover who he was. And I think that's kind of a neat experience to have, actually. Because you mentioned that this is not a biopic. It's definitely not a biopic, not is at it? All. Is it frustrate you if people are referring to it as a kind Fred of, Rogers biopic? Kind yeah. of. Because, and I kind of went through that with Can You Ever Forgive Me, too, which also was not a biopic. I'll probably never make a biopic, but people tend to hear if, an, if a story is about a real life person, they just say, oh, biopic. And you're like, no, just because it's based on a real person, it doesn't mean it's going to tell you the story of their life. It could just be a very interesting story that happens to be based on someone who is, who is real. But it's, yeah, it's just not that. I know I said earlier that um, I know if I was talking to you about Tom Hanks, so I'm, but I'm going to carry on and just talk to you about Tom Hanks for a moment. Um, he's fun I mean, to talk yeah, about. He's great to talk about. I mean, he is perfect casting for this. And I think we sort of, well, I mean, obviously... It, he's someone that everyone says he's lovely. Fred Rogers is lovely. It's the perfect kind of. They're lying. He's such a jerk. He's <laughs> such a jerk. <laughs> I was wondering because I, I still didn't see him. I didn't see Tom Hanks in this performance. And even yeah. though they are very similar in their kind of outlook on life, they're very different people. Aren't very they? different. I mean, when Tom Hanks walks into a room, he's he's so funny. He's boisterous. He's hilarious. He's a natural comedian. And Fred was much more reserved, you know. He was not, I think he was a natural introvert, really. He spent a lot of time alone, and the reason that the show came about for him was because he kind of had these puppets that he talked to. He spent some of his childhood sick and pretty isolated, and he, it just feels the opposite of Tom Hanks when it comes to energy. Mm-hmm. So, so much of the performance was having to pull him back into a much more passive listening role where he was comfortable in silence and discomfort. He, he let moments be uncomfortable, which is not something Tom Hanks naturally would do. He's such a charming person. Um, and even here, you know, we're all doing press all together and you can hear him down the hall. He's m- cracking everybody up. It's just not who Fred Rogers was. Um, so although I understand why people feel like, oh, it was just the perfect casting, and I think it is the perfect casting, he really transformed. I mean, it was something, he sort of channeled something very different and very deep to play Fred. Just very quickly before I go, I'm just wondering what's next, if you started working on your next project. I haven't. Uh-huh. I need a bit of a break after these two back-to-back movies, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'll probably write something, take a little bit of time, be with my kid. Well, I can't wait to see what it is. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.